Yo, what is up guys? Del Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So yeah, just doing some errands right now. Uh, as you can see, it's a rather foggy day in the UK. Kind of sums up the way the world is right now. A lot of people are blind to what's in front of them. Um, but less of that. Quick post-fight thoughts video for Errol Spence Jr. versus Danny Garcia. Now, ultimately, this was the fight that I expected. A more circumspect Errol Spence Jr. Boxing behind his jab, not taking as many risks, not being so aggressive, and boxing his way to a una unanimous decision. It's the sort of fight that I expected, ultimately. Um, you know, for the record, I scored this fight eight rounds to four in favour of Errol Spence Jr., Errol boxed quite well in my opinion, he showed some good fundamentals, uh, good jab, nice high guard and he dictated where this fight was fought for the most part and once again with Danny Garcia you just are left with the impression that he could have done a little bit more in there. You know when you look at the, the Sean Porter fight, the Keith Furman fight and even this fight with Errol Spence Jr. you just feel that Danny Garcia didn't, didn't leave it all in the ring. And that's the impression I get with Danny Garcia. But he had success. He had some good moments. He landed some good shots. But ultimately, it was just too far, few and far in between for my liking. But um, yeah, Errol Spence started this fight well behind the jab. Uh, showing a nice high guard. He was catching Danny Garcia's shots on the gloves early on. And he was boxing well behind that jab. The southpaw jab in this fight from Errol Spence Jr. was landing regularly. As we know, Danny Garcia has a low... Uh, a low left hand, so obviously the southpaw jab is going to find the target if you've, got, if, you've, if you've got your left hand low, and the jab was working quite nicely for Errol Spence, and um, yeah, he was boxing throughout this fight, when the fight, when he could, he, he, he actually did apply pressure, he had some good moments where he was landing body shots at mid-range and up close, but not as much as we're used to seeing from Errol Spence Jr., and you know, I think that's mainly because of what Errol Spence has gone through in the past 12, 13, 14 months. The car crash, the inactivity. Errol Spence Jr. must have had questions of his own in his own mind. And I expected this sort of performance. Was he 100%? In my opinion, no. But nevertheless, considering what's happened, in my opinion, still a pretty good performance by Errol Spence. And um, I certainly believe he's going to get better from this. Now he's had a fight, now he's had 12 rounds under his belt, the ring rust has been shed, so I expect Errol Spence now to push on and basically get back to the level where he once was. I didn't see any noticeable decline from Errol Spence, yeah he looked rusty, he looked a little more circumspect than usual, but I think that's just because of the circumstances. Um, when he was hit, he took the shots quite well. Danny Garcia got his attention a few times mainly in like round seven where Danny Garcia landed like an overhand right, a looping overhand right, and it caught Errol Spence flush. And er Errol Spence certainly felt it. Wouldn't say he was hurt, but he got his attention. And yeah, anything that Danny threw at him, Errol Spence Jr. was equal to. So that was nice to see. It was good to see Errol take a few hard shots and not respond badly. So that's good going forwards for Errol Spence Jr. But yeah, ultimately... I thought he boxed quite well in this bout. The last sort of three rounds or so, he kind of took his foot off the gas. Um, again, I'm assuming that's because of the inactivity. Maybe his stamina is not where it once was uh, pre-accident, you know. But um, he certainly took a few rounds off, more than he's used to doing. And he actually said after the fight that, you know, his stamina wasn't quite there at, at its usual level. And that's understandable when you when you consider what's been going on. But all things considered, I thought Errol Spence Jr. boxed really well. Uh, Danny Garcia, to me, again, just didn't do enough. Left He left something in the ring. Uh, Danny Garcia, for me, he was trying to box Errol Spence Jr. He was fighting on the outside more than I was expecting. He was kind of boxing behind the jab, looking for that straight right hand or the overhand right. And yeah, he had some success doing that. But to me, he should have, he, he should have really mixed up a lot more. Uh, forced the initiative a lot more and try to draw Errol Spence Jr. into some exchanges. Not saying going, I'm not saying he should have gone balls to the wall, but he should have tried to exchange with Errol Spence a, a little bit more. Danny Garcia, as we know, is a good counter puncher. He's pretty good in exchanges. He keeps his composure and he can time you. So yeah, I thought 
I, me personally, I felt I felt Danny Garcia should have tried to engage Errol Spence Jr. in exchanges, tried to force him into exchanges, but Danny Danny never did that. Never really created created any of his own traps. And ultimately, yeah, you know, Danny Garcia just didn't do enough. He fought a decent fight, but just wasn't enough. And the fight itself in general was actually a pretty good fight, to be fair. Fairly competitive. It wasn't like a wash or one-sided. Danny Garcia was giving him things to think about. But um, Errol Spence Jr., once again, just did a bit more than Danny Garcia. Outworked him, outboxed him, and won the fight relatively clearly, in my opinion. Again, I scored this fight eight rounds to four in favour of Errol Spence Jr. And uh, a positive performance, all things considered. I really enjoyed his fundamentals in this fight. Errol Spence Jr. has good fundamentals anyway, but I liked the jab, I liked the high guard. He showed some good defence at times. Yeah, occasionally he got caught, sometimes he fell in, but yeah, Danny, uh, sorry, Errol Spence Jr. boxed pretty well and uh, showcased what he's good at. And um, yeah, onwards and upwards for Errol Spence Jr., I think we all know what we want to see next. We want to see Errol Spence Jr. versus Terence Crawford. As we know, though, boxing politics gets in the way of these sort of fights. Um, I'm, I'm remaining optimistic, but I can't see that fight happening next. Maybe maybe Errol Spence Jr. could fight Manny Pacquiao. Obviously, Manny Pacquiao has the WBA title. That would be a good fight for Errol Spence Jr. But ultimately, obviously, if you ask me, uh, if you ask me what fight I want, it's... Uh, it's Errol Spence Jr. versus Terence Crawford. And listen, man, again, if Errol Spence Jr. gets back to his best, 100%, which I, which I think he will do, I think he beats Terence Crawford. I, I really do. I think I think Errol Spence Jr. right now is the best welterweight in the world. In terms of, like, a head-to-head -head basis, who I think is going to beat who, I think Errol Spence Jr. is the best in the world. And, uh, yeah, a positive performance. Things to build on, improve the stamina, you know, uh, improve your confidence, but once Errol Spence does that, I expect him to get back to his best, and he was very close to it against Danny Garcia. Uh, a B-plus performance from Errol Spence Jr., and ultimately, um, I'm satisfied with it. I, I had the certain question marks answered that I was worried about. The chin of Errol Spence Jr. following the accident, you know, um, his mindset, etc., and I thought he answered those questions quite well. Um, but yeah, I mean, share your thoughts below. How did you score this fight? What did you make of Errol Spence Jr.'s performance? What did you make of Danny Garcia's performance? And where do they go from here? As for Danny Garcia, I mean, where does he go from here? Christ. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. He's fought Keith Thurman. He's, he's fought Sean Porter. He's fought Errol Spence Jr. Do you want to see any rematches of those fights? Me, not so much. I mean, it's, it's hard with Danny Garcia. Who does he fight next? I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Mikey versus Danny. Mikey Garcia versus Danny Garcia. That could be a fun fight, but I think Danny Garcia right now could be in no man's land, to be honest. But um, yeah, share your thoughts below. It's Beanie Guy Delboy. Peace.